our hospital has a number of um, you know different incentives to treat um, you know obviously skin and soft tissue infections and other um, protocolized infections um, obviously um, first and foremost and which is probably the biggest um, for for us is that we are just overwhelmed as far as census so on any given day our hospital is usually over a hundred percent full we have many patients waiting in the emergency department in the PACU um, we obviously have, um, and it's not unusual for us to have elective surgeries canceled or delayed um, in order to wait for a bed that's available. So this is a big incentive uh, for us to not admit patients, not only infectious uh, diseases patients such as skin and soft tissue infections, but really any patient. So by protocolizing them and um, focusing on you know, reducing admissions, maximizing outpatient therapy, even um, IV antibiotic therapy, and having early discharge becomes a big priority. Uh, for us. So um, that's usually the big incentive um, for many of them. Now with skin and soft tissue infections, the thing that's difficult is the patient population, at least here in California where I work, is a difficult patient population. Um, they often live outdoors or are homeless and don't have a home. They're often very mobile and not very stable. Um, if you choose to do oral antibacterial therapy, compliance is a big issue. Um, if you want to do outpatient IV therapy, um, many of them don't have a home, so you can't send them home. And if you do have a home, we have a very high rate of methamphetamine and drug abuse. So it sends, sending them home with a you know indwelling venous catheter is almost impossible. So that subgroup of patients can be very difficult. And we found from our own internal evaluations that these patients stay significantly longer than average in the literature. Um, and that you know they certainly outstay what is called our DRG or our billing. So we know that you know for most of these patients, um, unfortunately, our hospital loses money. That's not why we do it. Um, but obviously, when um, they sort of lose money and they stay much longer, and they certainly you know are much more difficult to manage. Any time we can maximize that therapy as an outpatient and impact our census, it becomes important. Um, we have sort of multiple protocols for skin infections in our hospital. The first is on the emergency department and outpatient side. So um, we look, um, for example, at patients, you know, in defining diseases where oral therapy should be the standard of care. This, for example, is small things such as one to two centimeter abscesses, carbuncles, furuncles, cellulitis that's less than 75 centimeters squared. This would be classic outpatient oral therapy. That would be a guideline. Um, if they obviously have larger disease, larger abscess, systemic signs of infection like a fever, tachycardia, SERS symptoms. Some of those patients may get admitted. Some of them may be warranted for home therapy or you know, outpatient therapy with maybe the long-acting lipoglycopeptides like dalbavancin um, or aridavancin where that provides us you know, a single dose where we can send them home and have um, you know, long, um, long outpatient therapy. We use dalbavancin for that case. And on average, we probably capture about you know, 20 to 25% of the patients that are candidates. We can certainly do better, but again, sometimes it's difficult to hit all of those. And lastly, when we do, um, uh, you know, when they do get admitted, obviously, um, we like to maximize ways to get them um, home or out of the hospital. Um, examples of that would be if they can tolerate home IV therapy, we transition to that as quickly as possible. Um, it might be some options for early oral therapy. We did, for example, in our hospital provide free oral therapy for our patients. Our inpatient hospital, just uh, hospital pharmacy, just filled, for example, you know, doxycycline or trimethoprim sulfa. We carried it up to the patient, gave it to them for free to improve compliance. Or we may actually give them a dose of a long-acting lipoglycopeptide like dalbavancin, send them home a few days early, which allows us to you know, free up a bed, optimize this therapy for the patient, and um, is able to you know, transition therapy much more quickly as an outpatient.